Shalom. I want to start off by giving all glory and honor to Yahweh, Ba'ashim Yahweh Shai, Ba'ashim Rakak Wadash. Double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone. And Shalom to all the Akim out there. Continue to push this thing of ours in truth and sincerity. I'm the brother Manatazak, and I just want to share a quick testimony that I had the other night regarding um, the war in heaven and the deliverance of the elect. Um, to start off, um, this this uh, this vision I had was was very intense. Um, I, I woke up in a in a cold sweat, and I had a migraine. You know, um, usually uh, when I have dreams and visions, you know, uh, I don't normally wake up, go to sleep, and go right back into the same same dream. Uh, that's what helped me to to understand that this was something serious because I woke up two or three times during this this uh, vision and I jumped right back into the same scene, the same scenario. Now I've only been in the truth for you know a couple years and at least once a year, I'll have a very intense vision like this. And at first I wasn't going to uh, to share this openly because you know I don't want brothers to think I'm trying to exhort myself or try to big myself up. You know, I'm trying to be very careful in this thing of ours because I, I realize how important, how serious this is, you know. So I'm just trying to trying to st stay stay in my lane, basically do what I can to help the Akim and help push this truth. But it wasn't until, you know, getting uh, some advice from the elder brother Mawatazak and also um, staying in deep in prayer that I realized that, you know, sharing this testimony will be the best way to help. Um, further this truth because you know dealing with the things that we deal with on a daily basis um, you know and, and trying to fight this fight you know sometimes we need um, words of exhortation and um, you know words of hope so Lord willing uh, this the short testimony can can be that to the to the Nasir Akim and Akwathiam out there that are continuing to push this word this sound doctrine okay so uh Without further ado, um, to jump right into it, um, basically, uh, it started off that uh, we were all on a beach. And when I say we, I mean mainly the uh, the, the different camps, uh, Great Millstone. You know, the, the different camps from, from Chicago were all there, um, Dallas, uh, the GMS Los Angeles camp, uh, Mississippi. You know, we were all at a, at a resort. Um, back in the world, I used to travel a lot um, to like Cancun, uh, different places in Mexico. And this is what it reminded me of, you know, white sand beaches, you know, uh, tropical blue water, you know, a nice resort. We were all there. And um, all of a sudden, we looked up in the sky and we started seeing chariots. Now, um, being out here in Los Angeles, uh, chariots show up quite often, um, at least every other week. Um, on my channel, I've uploaded some videos of chariots showing up, and um, when they showed up in my in my vision, they looked exactly like they do on the video, just bright lights in the sky. But uh, as more and more Akiyams start to look up in the sky and notice the chariots, they started to be more and more frequent. They started to show up and get closer, and they all had uh, different designs. Um, the best way I could explain it is, I mean, it can't really put into words, but... Um, when you see movies like Independence Day and War of the Worlds, you know, they, they look exactly like that as far as mechanical-wise, but there there seemed to be life with them, like like they were they like they had a personality of their own, like they were alive. Uh, that that's the best way that that I could put it. They didn't seem like just normal machines or vehicles. There there was a, a very high in, intensity to them, almost an intelligence. And uh, there were there were different designs. They were in formation, and it, it was it was it was a very intense feeling uh, to look up and see them. Even though being in the truth, we know that Yahweh Shai is coming back, you know, with the angels and with the chariots. But to see them up close, it was it was very uh, intimidating, you know. And there there were other people um, at the resort as well, and they were they were freaking out, you know, crying and. And asking what was going on, but a lot of the Akim were just giving all praises to how about Shimi Shai, you know, saying Kwam Yasharala. But uh, all of a sudden, the uh, the military showed up, or the the Air Force rather, uh, you know, they started to uh, to shoot, try to shoot down the chariots. But 
the, the chariots don't move with the same laws and physics that that a normal aircraft would they uh they defy the laws of gravity the laws of physics and they they alter reality it's the best way i could put it because a lot of the missiles would just phase through the chariots and hit opposing uh u.s forces um a lot of them would just disappear right before they hit a chariot you know the chariots would disappear and reappear just the the type of things that they that they did you know the defied reality and it, it was it, it, it was a it was a crazy sight to see um the the whole heavens were, were full of this this battle and even esau and his uh his technology he was bringing out ships and different jet fighters that looked like chariots but they weren't i mean you could tell the difference like like almost as if they were they were trying to imitate the technology of the most high um, because I know that they had these uh, these telescopes and these satellites and they see these chariots all the time and they always put what they see in my opinion in these movies as far as like Independence Day and these different kind of uh, alien invasion movies I think that they they put in these movies what they see in the heavens because that's exactly what the chariots look like in this particular vision of mine you know but um, it, it was the, the, the battle wasn't didn't last long I mean looking up I mean, the, the whole sky was full of this this battle, but but it, it was over like in a matter of seconds. I mean, that's what it seemed like because the, these uh, Esau and his technology have uh, no chance against the chariots. When they would uh, fire their lasers from the ships, and they would they would hit these different jet fighters, they would dissolve from the outside in. There'd be no no shrapnel, no wreckage that would fall down to the sky. It's like they would get hit in midair and just dissolve before they they hit anything. It was. It was, it was it was unreal and looking up a lot of us Akiyam were, were frightened uh, myself included because at that exact moment the chariots start shooting down at the people on the resort and when these lasers hit the people they would they would literally disintegrate and their clothes would burst into flames almost as if as if they were they were being you know instantaneously dehydrated they would just burst into like a cloud of like like pink dust and you know you would look down and you would see it would look like like a pile of like like Himalayan salt, like like pink Himalayan salt was all that was left of them, and it would slowly dissolve. You know, and these uh these golden golden rays of energy would be firing down from the sky and hitting these people, and and you know that we, we start running, you know. So I heard uh, one of the Akim say, "We got to get to the room. We got to get to the room." So everybody took off running in the direction of the resort. And all the while, these lasers are firing down on these 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 people and, and completely incinerating them. And I didn't realize until later, uh, after a deep thought and, and, and really trying to analyze this dream, that the chariots were, were firing at these people, making a way for us to get to the resort. Because it was all chaos, it was all hectic. But during the dream, I, I, was, I was scared because... There was people right next to me being incinerated and it, like these pink bursts of uh, just dust and salt would just hit me. I could feel the heat from the lasers from from their bodies just just exploding from the fire from their clothes. You know, just for, it almost seemed like the atmosphere was on fire. It, it, was, it was very intense. And uh, uh, one particular brother um, from the camp, uh, Yalad, you know, he was running directly in front of me. And as we were running, I could feel myself getting tired, and uh, I kept I kept wanting to stop. Like I, I kept telling myself that you know uh, I'm not gonna make it, you know I, I I need to stop. I need to catch my breath. And through the spirit, this brother kept saying, "Hey, what are you doing, man? We gotta keep going. We gotta keep moving. Let's go. Let's go." And I, I remember almost arguing with him, like, "Man, I'm tired. I'm tired. Like let, let me just catch my breath." And he's like, "No, we gotta keep going. We gotta keep going." So. I felt myself dig down, keep running, and, and uh, somehow, you know, me and the brother made it back to the room. And uh, as we went to the room, there was a, a large um, uh, number five on the door. And uh, I remember uh, knocking on the door, and uh, one of the brothers from the camp, Daniela, opened the door, and he was dressed in all white. And as soon as he opened the door, he saw me and Yelad, and he started, you know, jumping up and down like, yeah, yeah, you guys made it, you guys made it. You know, so he, we did the salute, you know, he, he let us in the door. And all the while, you know, people are still getting zapped by these chariots. So uh, 
people saw that the countenance on us was different, I guess, because when they looked at us and, and saw us celebrating, they, they, they knew that they needed to get where we were. So a group of people tried to run into the room, like, we got to get where they are. We got to go. We got to go to this room. Like, we got to go with those guys. And I, I remember Don Yalo looking out at them and saying, hey, if you can get in, then you can get in. But nobody could get through the door. The door was wide open, but it's like something was blocking them from getting in. And all the while, they were getting blasted by these lasers right in front of the door. And, and the door just closed by itself. It shut and it locked. And we can hear people screaming outside the room. And I remember looking across the room and seeing particular brothers from the camp. You know, Mawatazak was there, um, Barak, Dama'a, Micaala, um, Zion. And they were, they were all um, holding their Bibles and saying the Shammai prayer um, in, in Hebrew. Um, and it was just, it, it was a very intense, very um, scary feeling because even though I was with the brothers, I could still hear the people outside the room, you know, dying in agony. And um, before long, you know, the, the firing stopped uh, and we, we looked out onto the balcony and Mawazak told us to, to all step out onto the balcony. And when we did, we saw these different, um, I want to call them shuttle crafts coming towards the balcony. Remember, we we're on the fifth floor. So as we all stepped onto the balcony, um, we, we, we went onto these shuttle crafts two by two. OK, and uh, the shuttle crafts would slowly lift us up into the air. And as we looked up. The, the sky was completely covered. It was, it, it was it almost looked like it was it was pitch black, except there were hundreds of these uh these bright golden circles underneath the craft, and every uh, shuttle craft was going up into these. So I was with the brother Yalad and one of these shuttle craft, and as we went up into this this massive ship, uh, we all met um, inside in, in what looked like a like a big uh, I want to say amphitheater. Um, I don't know if brothers uh, ever went to, to see any plays or any uh, shows like that in Vegas, but it looked like the lobby of one of those where it was just, it was, it, it was chandeliers, there were lamps, there were uh, large stones that were glowing, um, there, were, uh, there were chairs encircling the room, and uh, the large windows looking down on, onto the resort. Um, and uh, as we went up into these craft, um, in, into this big craft, a lot of the brothers um, from from the different camps were all there. You know, we were all, uh, uh, you know, saying Kwam Yasharala, saying the salute, you know, giving all praises. And uh, I noticed a, uh, a feeling of relief almost. But then I looked and saw that that opposite the room, the this this amphitheater that we were all in was full of nothing but IUIC members. OK, um, they, they were all in their purple and gold. You know, I, I saw I saw Nate, I saw Yawasop, you know, um, I saw all these different uh, uh, IUIC figures, and they was all in their their you know their regalia with the bracers and you know the combat boots and all that, and uh, they, I noticed that they were they had uh, these proud looks on their face as they they stared across at us, you know, they were saying yeah yeah we made it, we told you, we told you, we knew it, we knew it, you know, they were doing cartwheels and just jumping up and just you know. They, they were bragging, you know, and uh, all of a sudden a, a, a group of angels came. I mean, they weren't they weren't glowing. They didn't have wings, but I knew they were angels because they were tall. They had real stoic looks on their faces. You know, um, th uh, they came and they separated us into groups, but they kept the members of IUIC on one side of the, the amphitheater. And they were led down a hallway with uh, with glowing red lights. And they all went in, they were marching, they were marching, but then they, they started getting quiet. They started getting really quiet as they started looking around, asking questions. And the more, the further and further they went down this tunnel with the red lights, you could see the the, the look on their faces like they, they didn't know what was going on. They were, they were unsure of themselves all of a sudden. And before any of them could ask any questions or before anything could be explained, a metal door shut on all of them, you know, and all of the all of uh, the rest of the Akim were looking at each other like, oh, what's going on? Like, what was that about? But before we can ask any questions, we were all separated into groups. And uh, we were led down 12 different hallways. And each of the hallways had the uh, the stone of, uh, of our particular tribe. And, you know, it, it was written in Hebrew and the hallways were glowing. And we were all uh, divided by our particular tribes down these hallways. And I remember walking single file uh, down the, the hallway of Judah, Yehawada, 
and at the end of uh, the tunnel was a bright light. And as I approached the light, I could I could feel my heart racing, just uh, it, excitement, anxiety. And as soon as I entered the light, I, I woke up. And when I woke up, you know, I, I jumped out of bed, you know, like almost as if I was trying to catch my breath, like I like I was falling from a, from a high. Like, like, you know, when you're on a roller coaster and you go down that big dip and you, you kind of lose your breath, that's exactly what it felt like. And I looked down and I noticed that I was in a cold sweat, but my sheets were completely soaked, full of full of sweat. And, and I had a, a massive migraine, you know, and uh, that, that's when I knew that, that this was most likely a, a vision. Now, the specifics of it, uh, I can't say if that's exactly how it's going to happen, but I knew that... Um, this was something important, so I shared it with the head of the camp. And, uh, you know, through prayer and through much thought, I'm now sharing it with you, Akiam. So um, I'm saying all that just to say that, you know, even though, you know, the the, the times are, are tearing, you know, a lot of things are happening uh, through the spirit. As Apostle DeHart coined, this is the year of prophecy and things are moving. We're not even through the end of the year yet. And you know, observatories are shutting down. Stores are continuing to, to close. The mark of the beast is still being pushed. And the men of the Lord are still on the streets, you know, preaching and teaching, you know, week in and week out. So I say that just to say that uh, no matter how hard it looks or how hard it gets, continue to fight for this thing. Okay, because this is all that we have. And, uh, you know, through the spirit, you know, even when I wanted to give up, you know, I had the, the Akim there to continue to push me to keep going, to keep fighting, and Lord willing, that's what this video can do for any Akim that are feeling weak or that just need a boost in faith, okay? Uh, this is the brother Manatazak uh, from GMS Ancient of Days in Los Angeles, and I just want to say, Brakatayahawa, Brakatayahawa Shai, Brakatayahawa, Brakatayahawa Shai, Brakatayahawa, Brakatayahawa Shai, and um, double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone that continue to rule well and lead the sheep in the right direction through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bashim Yahushai and Shalom to all the Akim out there. Continue to push and continue to fight because we're almost out of here. Shalom.